Good morning. It's Monday, September 2nd, 2024. It is a beautiful day here in Northeast Iowa. Cool, low humidity, a very delightful day. I hope you have a chance to enjoy it. Today, of course, is Labor Day, a day in which we honor those who produce all of the labor that makes the things that our society depends upon, helps our society function. It is a way of honoring those who do the work to get things done. And I hope and, and pray you've had a good Labor Day weekend and had a time with the family and good enjoyment. Just a few announcements for the week before us. A reminder to confirmands and their parents, we have a confirmation meeting this coming Wednesday night at St. Paul Church. That will be at 7 o'clock. It is introduced to Pastor Huey as our new partner in ministry as well as bring you up to speed on what we'll be doing this year in confirmation. So we hope to see you all there Wednesday night. To St. Paul Acolytes, following the uh, confirmation meeting, we will have a brief Acolyte meeting. I just have a few things I want to share with you guys uh, so that you'll be aware of them and be able to participate more fully in your position as an Acolyte. Reminder of the joint worship service coming up on Sunday, September 15th. We'll be meeting at the Community Center in Garnavillo. There will be Sunday school for all generations from at 9.30 in the morning. Worship services will start at 10.30. Following worship, we'll be putting school kits together for Lutheran World Relief, and then join in a potluck following all of that. We hope to see you all there. This is part of our River Cluster ministry that we are working on, and we hope and pray that this is another good beginning to our partnership. Those are the announcements I'm going to touch on for this morning. I want to ask a question. Let's say you came to church on Sunday morning and into the pulpit to preach the sermon steps a known criminal, someone who was an accessory to murder, and it was proven that they were an accessory. It was not hidden and everybody in the community knew it. What would you do? And you would probably think to yourself, how can the pastor allow such a thing? But that's exactly what happened. It happened twice in the New Testament, in the book of Acts. It happened in the synagogues at Damascus and in Jerusalem. I want to read from Acts 9, if you would. For several days, Paul was with the disciples at Damascus. And in the synagogues, he immediately proclaimed Jesus, saying, He is the Son of God. And all who heard him were amazed and said, Is not this the man who made havoc in Jerusalem of those who called on Jesus' name? And has he come here for the purpose to bring them bound to the chief priests? But Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Christ. And then again, And when Paul had come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared to them, how on the road he had seen the Lord, who spoke to him, and how at Damascus he had preached boldly in the name of Jesus. So he went in and out among them at Jerusalem, preaching boldly in the name of Jesus. These are your words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us in truth. Your word is truth. Amen. We need to remember that Paul, who originally was named Saul, was the one who approved of the stoning of Stephen. He was an accomplice to a murder. And his plan when he was going to Damascus was to arrest those who believed in Jesus and bring them bound back to Jerusalem for trial. And if they got hurt or injured or killed in the process, well, such is life. But on the way to Damascus, of course, Paul encountered the risen Christ and was transformed. He became a person who could boldly proclaim the death and the resurrection of Jesus who would go forward to be the, perhaps the greatest evangelist in the early church, certainly the greatest theologian of the early church. His writings make up a third of the New Testament, and his witness to the death and the resurrection of Jesus is the foundation upon which we as Lutheran Christians have established our witness to the faith. Saul became Paul, was transformed by the death and the resurrection of Jesus, which is a reminder to us that even the most wretched sinner can be made a new creation by the power of the Holy Spirit working through the dying and the rising of Jesus. And that's one of the things I think we can give thanks for in the church, that God can use even someone like Paul, 
whose past was not a good one, whose past actually was a witness against him, whose past did follow him the rest of his life, but did not deter him from proclaiming Jesus as Lord and Savior. And so we want to measure and weigh everyone who gives witness to the Lord. If their past is a witness against them, we certainly want to consider that. But if they have been transformed by Christ, and if they are proclaiming Christ and living a new life in Christ, then we consider that of more paramount importance than their failings and their weaknesses in the past. Paul was ever aware of how he had fallen short of the Lord. He considered himself the most wretched of all sinners. In fact, he amazed at God's un ending grace that allowed him, after all he had done, to become an instrument of God's purpose and will. So let's give thanks for all of those sinners who have been made new by the dying and the rising of Jesus, for sinners such as I and you, and for sinners like Paul, all who are saved and redeemed and brought into the light. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for St. Paul and his witness to you. We give you thanks for the power of your transforming grace, which made of him a new creation, forgave him his sins, and brought him into newness of life. We give you thanks that his faithful witness has stood down through the ages, and that our church today is built upon that witness. We give you thanks for all of those who are gainfully employed in doing things to make our culture and society better, whose labor we honor today. We give you thanks for those who have the willingness and the ability to work. We pray, too, that those who are seeking work may find it, that those who may need jobs may find jobs that provide for their families. We are grateful, Lord, for all these things that come from your hand. We ask it all in your name. Amen. Well, I will see you all again tomorrow morning. I hope you have a very good rest of the day. And until then, goodbye now.